NTI Online. My name is David and today I'm going to walk you through replacing a gas valve on a TX boiler. Uh, specifically the valve I'm going to replace uh, is on the TX 150 combi today. However, the valve replacement instructions are really going to be the same whether you have an FTV, a VMAX or really anything that shares this gas valve. Uh, so some of these steps will be common. There will be a few small differences from boiler to boiler. First thing you're going to want to do is remove the front cover of the boiler. If your boiler is not already powered down, turn it off using the power switch or you can turn it off with the breaker. Next thing you're going to do is turn off your gas and we're going to have to disconnect the gas line. I've already broken the union below the boiler, so now what I can do is just take my pipe wrench and remove the gas line from the valve. So you're going to get your pipe wrench, loosen up the gas line, Remove that from the valve completely. Next, you're going to need a quarter inch nut driver, and that's just so that you can gain access to the inside of the cabinet. There's a single screw on the side here that closes the door. Once the door is open, disconnect your gas line. You've already removed the gas valve nipple from there. You're going to pull off this little rubber hose, set that to one side. You need a Torx T25 screwdriver and you have to remove these two screws right up here. Now these are very tight on a brand new boiler or one that the valve's never been taken off of. So make sure you do have the correct screwdriver and just be aware that they are an extremely tight screw so that they don't vibrate loose. Set these to one side, you'll be reusing them. From there, you're just going to pull the valve off. Watch this little rubber grommet here. This sits right on the end of the valve. You're going to transfer this to the new valve. If you have a boiler that's been converted to propane, there will be a brass disc inserted to the groove inside of this. You'll want to transfer that disc over to the new valve as well. When you get your new valve, you're going to push that on there. You're going to take off these four screws and you're going to transfer this adapter to the new gas valve. Once you have the new valve ready to install, you're going to place it back in push it up in place, make sure that gasket seat seats correctly. We have seen cases where it's become uh, bent because it was put in a little bit uh, crooked. Just verify that it slips on nicely the whole way around. Now we'll reinstall our screws. Make sure those are snug so that it doesn't vibrate loose. Next, we're gonna reinstall the gas line. When you make this connection here, you are going to have to use new thread sealant to ensure that you get a good seal on the, uh, uh, on the pipe and whatever is required to seal the, the gas pipe down below. Now that we have our gas line reconnected, we're going to reconnect the power supply to the valve. Use care when you're putting this in. I've only seen it once or twice, but it is possible to stick this in offset by one pin. And if you do that, it will both damage the boiler control and pop a fuse. So make sure that goes on nice and smoothly. It's very important that you reconnect the rubber tubing to the little nipple on the side of the valve. And now that that's done, you're going to get the instructions that came with replacing your valve. And because this valve is common to a whole bunch of different boilers, there's an adjustment that has to be made. So I've just put this on a TX-151 combi. And from fully closed, I want to make an adjustment of four turns. So what I'm gonna do is grab my technician or flat screwdriver. You can also do this with a two millimeter Allen key, but I'll use this screwdriver for now. You're gonna find the high fire adjustment screw. You're gonna turn that clockwise until it bottoms out. You're gonna come back one, two, three, four complete revolutions. Now that should get you close to a factory setting. There are different versions of this valve and depending on the version you get, it may require several additional turns. 
Uh, you may also require additional turns if your boiler has been previously been converted to propane. So what you would do at this point is allow the boiler to try and ignite. If it lights and runs normally, you would perform a combustion test as normal and that would be it. If your boiler fails ignition and does not light, make sure that you have the rubber tube and the, the power connector uh, correctly connected. And every time the boiler fails in ignition, you're going to back it out one complete revolution. And you're going to do that until you've gone an additional three to four turns, uh, maybe five turns if you're on propane. If the boiler still isn't lighting, you should probably contact technical support. Something else might be wrong. Uh, but it is sometimes necessary to go an additional four or five turns on top of the four that we started with. Once you have your high fire set and the boiler's running nicely, you're going to take a two millimeter Allen key. You're going to insert it into the adjustment screw on the offset here. Now this tends to be a fairly sensitive adjustment screw. So when you're making adjustments, you're going to go clockwise to increase CO2 or counterclockwise to decrease. And if you're thinking of a clock, you want to go one hour at a time. Don't go more than that. Be very patient with your adjustments. It will take about a minute for the uh, gas and air to get into the chamber, to be burned and then to exit the exhaust and for your analyzer to read it. So make sure you're patient with that and just do it slowly. Once you've got the boiler set at low fire, you should be good to go and you should have no more problems. Now included with these instructions is something that I haven't mentioned and that is a modification that may or may not be required on the air intake of your boiler. If you have one of the boilers that may require the adjustment, what you would do is undo the clamp that holds the air intake pipe on and just loosen that up. Watch that this doesn't rotate out of the way or if you do take it right off, just make sure the screws are somewhere you can access it when you go to put it back together. Just pull the intake out and this one's already received the modification but there's a very small hole right at the very bottom here. And that was there to let out any water that may become trapped in the venting. If your boiler does not have that, you want to find the bottom center of this pipe, drill a 1 8 of an inch hole directly in the bottom, about as close to this clamp as you can reasonably get it. And all that does is if water happens to collect in the intake, it'll drip out harmlessly into the cabinet instead of potentially overflowing and flooding into the gas valve itself. Once you've reinstalled your air intake, Make sure you securely tighten these clamps. I like to give it just a little jiggle and make sure that it's not going anywhere. And at that point, your gas valve replacement is complete. Thanks for watching NTI Online. If you like the video, please click like below. Make sure to check us out on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook.